Rebecca from Waffle TV and I'm here with the wonderfully talented Tom Thumb. How are you today? I'm good. Just um, <laughs> just warming up for the show with uh, some energy drinks and <laughs> yeah, trying to get through the last of the festival. So your show's on every day at the Underbelly at quarter to seven mm -hmm. and it's based around the idea that you are a compulsive beatboxer. <laughs> yeah. It, Tell us a bit about that. <laughs> loosely based around based around that idea. I mean, I started off, like, I mean, this time last year, I wasn't even thinking about doing a solo show. I was uh, sitting on my girlfriend's floor while she was living in New York, and I was like, oh, that'd be a funny idea for a video, you know, like being a... Because I've been watching, like, heaps of um, documentaries on, on, like, junkies and stuff like that, and they're all like, oh, I've got to get out. She you knew know. it was very funny. We were all watching it on Yeah, YouTube. yeah, right. Um, so I was watching lots of like real life heroin documentaries and like crackheads and all that kind of stuff and I was like, man, that's like the exact same thing for me except obviously without narcotics and actually being a crackhead, like I don't have to sell my VCR to get beatboxing or anything. But um, you know, like so I saw that and I went, oh man, all these things can be applied to the stuff that I do, like you know, all the gateways into certain things like going from break dancing into beatboxing and you know like the gateway drugs and and just always just constantly constantly doing it and having withdrawals just being silent and stuff so I was like oh yeah that'd be cool so I wrote I wrote um yeah the mockumentary called beating the habit and I went oh I really and then Scott the producer uh, who I'm working with I think like an act pulled out of the Adelaide Fringe Festival and he was kind of like oh yeah by the way um, I booked you in for a month of solo shows and I was like <laughs> what am I? Yeah, and that was the first challenge was that, went, that was hugely successful yeah, yeah. rave reviews everybody loved you it's amazing it's yeah here. yeah and now I'm here and it's a completely different story no nah, it's uh how do you find it different that's interesting because everyone says it is different in Edinburgh how do you feel it's different um, I don't know. Well, yeah, I, just, I guess it's just more competitive. I mean, there's in Adelaide, there's not as much stuff to see, obviously. There's not as many people to come, but, I mean, it's, it's usually like a few shows that have a buzz about them, whereas here there's just so many and everyone can get four and five star reviews, you know what I mean? So it's just like, yo, Jim's blog gave me a five star review, you know, anyone can sort of get that so it's not about it's just more word of mouth kind of thing and uh, yeah it, it's definitely a lot harder and it's great at home because a lot of the humor that I employ in the show is it is very sort of Australian kind of stuff and so I kind of had to figure out how to twist it and, and it, it, it took me a good two weeks into the season and then I went okay this bit didn't really work probably should get rid of that and like after reading reviews and sort of finding the average um, sort of positive criticisms I guess and then taking that on board and just changing it around so I wish that everyone kind of did the reviews in the last two weeks but I mean I guess that wouldn't help me anyway but yeah. but yeah so now it, it's it's rocking so yeah I'm stoked so how are you finding Edinburgh everyone's raving about you everyone's very excited to meet you and watch you and think you're wonderfully talented how are you finding that how is it being one of the big names that everyone's kind of chatting about? Um, you are, even if you don't believe it. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I don't know. Well, it's very, very yeah, hard to recognize. It's like just around this general area. Yeah, like, yeah I've seen that. The street seeing, yeah, totally. But the thing is, I had like longer hair in my press in the press shot, and so it's kind of been like this mystique. And they're like, oh. You, that, that's you. No. <laughs> and it, but yeah, it is actually me on the poster. Yeah. But um, I mean, it's. I guess I don't sort of walk around looking like my press shot, going, <laughs> just sort of cruising around. Um, but yeah, I mean, I it's it's good to a degree. I mean, this time I've had to be a lot more disciplined with uh, my post show activities. Um, because I'm doing a solo show this time, I can't go out and get absolutely loose every night and, uh, for the risk of losing my voice. Yeah, yeah, well, like, and socialising, and I have to also be a bit more careful about what sort of promo things I do. Um, yeah, and just to try and conserve my voice, but... Yeah, I mean, I love Edinburgh, I've always loved it. It's just a, it's a hard stretch, so... Um, 
yeah, I mean, most of the day I sort of just spend like sitting at home going, oh, beatboxing, oh, again. And then, you know, you have to suck your whole day's energy and then just force it into an hour. And then by the time you finish, you're just coming down off the show. Yeah. So, but I mean, it's still great. I'm still giving it 110%. So how did you start? Like, it's it's a very unique talent to have. Not many people can do it. Mm. Um, did you get influence? Like, I've heard one of your influences was like Michael Winslow. Like, this kind of made things like that. Hmm. He's here. Have you had a chance to meet him? Start? Yeah, I've had a, a couple of good chats with him. Um, I'd really like to pick his brain and be like, oh man, can you do the sound of this? But then that's one of the things that I really really annoys me when other beatboxers come up to me and say oh man I love your trumpet you know how can you show me how to do it and I go yeah yeah I'll show you how to do it first of all you practice one sound for four years that's how you do it so I mean I don't want to be that guy um well I mean yeah just sort of oh I mean when I was younger I used to draw a lot like scribble and I'd always be drawing sound like drawing things like um you know i'd be like drawing a spaceship or like and just making sounds of things that i was drawing but um yeah i, I mean it was just kind of natural progression for me from from all the other elements of hip-hop uh because you know i started off as a graffiti writer and then as a break dancer and then then after that i got into into beatboxing so it was more it was definitely a natural progression from hip-hop and uh, i just found something that i could do easily because i was so hyperactive and i've always got so much energy to expend on pointless hobbies like beatboxing <laughs> I, it's so fascinating though just like what you did there how do you do that like how do you manipulate your voice yeah, it must be so easy, but thinking of like, the kind of, I don't know, the biology of it. Like, yeah. It? It's I guess. Really fascinating to watch. Yeah, so I guess I found. Like, we'll <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, well, I guess what I do, um, I, I put this section into my show, which has been really challenging, um, which is called because I, I sort of do a spiel about how, how often people come up and say, oh man, can you make this sound, can you make this sound? And so I decided to incorporate it into my show. So just getting people to yell things out and I'd just try and make them. And uh, so I guess if there's sounds that I can't do, I have to think of how I would make that sound by combining other sounds. Like the other day, someone asked me to do a cat fighting a dog underwater and I was like how do you do that and so it kind of ended up like just all doing those kind of I don't know it was uh it's just weird so I have to kind of think on my feet a lot and uh aside from that I go and sit in the dressing room in my little break in the show and I and to try and work on the noises like someone asked me to do a pneumatic drill and like all sorts of a kitten imploding I've just I've been getting weird things yeah uh, some of the audiences are very very sick audiences <laughs> exploding pandas kicking a duck who would kick a duck how do you even get close enough to a duck to kick it but uh yeah so anyways sorry i go on tangents a lot um yeah back to making noises um yeah i guess i just think of sounds that i can combine like i don't know you gotta say you can put a like a sound like that but then i figured that out and i went oh you know i wonder what happens if you put your teeth like and you can make like sort of trumpety sounds by just changing the shape of your mouth and stuff so like and just uh yeah just by combining noises like uh, if you put like a and a you can get like a, i don't know yeah that's another thing i want to put um i've been working on a thing where i overdub like I've got these uh, loop machines and I can sample in sounds into them and so I want to use it like a video game controller and overdub like a, a vision of Mario and do all like the all the, all the kind of sounds and so yeah that's what I want to do eventually is just like come up with a 
and all those kind of things and put that over the top. I'm so like, what are we It's such a, it's such a gift. Unique talent. I mean, how do you find that the, the audience come and like try to speak to you after? They're like, because a lot of we've heard a lot of people who have seen it and say it's amazing. They love it. And they think the show is really clever. And yeah, they're just completely fascinated by what you do. Do you think the audience like? Do you get a lot of audience? Yeah, a little bit. Um, Do you like getting audience feedback? Yeah, love it. Um, I love I love honest feedback, and I love it when people come up with ideas. But um, sometimes you get really pushy people that are like, hey, you know what? I think you should really try this. Basically, what I want to do is an interpretive dance piece with your sounds about the, you know, like, and you're just like, <laughs> um, because I'm mean, I'm pretty proud in the fact that I created it all on my own, like. I wanted help, but there was no one around, sort of, at the time to help me. So I was just kind of like, oh, I hope this works. Hey, here I am. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I love, I love feedback, especially like small ideas and things like that I can put in. Uh, it's been great here because I've had a few more friends that I can invite along, and they can say, oh man, that bit really sucks. I reckon you should change it. Um, in the nicest possible way they say that but yeah yeah and I mean it's easier to hear it from your friends so um, um, forgot what I was talking about forgot the original question yeah there's a few one of the ones that I, I use my loop pedals for I, I learnt bagpipes before I came because I was like, someone is going to request that. There is definitely someone that's going to request that. And it's happened like every second show, so I'm glad that I did. But um, yeah, bagpipes sometimes goes well. Sometimes I really need a tuning device, something that I can just get a note from and then go, all right, that's the key I'm going to do it in because I always just jump around in my keys. So sometimes it works really well and sometimes it works pretty good. But um, bagpipes, people love chainsaws and dolphins. Um, not in the same sort of. That was totally weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I've had dolphins having sex once. That was that was interesting. Did you do that? Um, yes. I, well, I didn't have sex with a dolphin, but I, but we did. I did make the sound. That was uh, interesting. Um, other sounds like. Yeah, people ask for voices a lot, which is hard because I don't really do. It's more I imitate sounds, like yeah. I imitate instruments, the voices of the instruments, not so much of the people. But um, yeah, like, there's like always machine guns, didgeridoos, um, sirens, chainsaws planes, trains, and then, yeah, just the weird things. Lots of, the Scottish people love exploding animals. I don't know why, it's just something that's happened. Completely funny. Yeah. Just for our own people, it's like, too far, yes. So, finally, why should the viewers of Welcome TV come see your show? Um, because I'm really poor, and it would be great if some people came. Um, Other than the fact that you're basically talented, and everyone makes money, you've got four and five stuff. Um, oh, I don't know if there's any other reasons. <laughs> um, I don't know. It'd be great. It'd be great to have some more people down in the show so I can uh, show off my weird party tricks for an hour. Thank you very much. So you much. can request some exploding animals. <laughs> Ever wanted to know what a cat exploding sounds like? Come on down. <laughs> Thank you very much. This has been Tom Thumb and I've been Rebecca for Waffle TV. Stay tuned for more videos and interviews.